Assalamu alaikum. This is lecture 2 in the series of discourse analysis. Uh, today we are going to cover a short topic that is the origin of discourse analysis. Um, every discipline, uh, including linguistics or the sub branches of linguistics, has its uh, origin and roots in the ancient time but they are later on established themselves as, a, as an independent field of study uh, for example uh, linguistics so the study of uh, language interested the ancient nations for example the ancient Indians uh, Greece, Rome, Babylonians uh, then uh, in the Middle Ages in the Renaissance and uh, in the 18th century linguistics was called uh, as philology but it was in the second half of the 20th century that linguistics emerged as an independent field of study as a, a separate discipline so the same was the case with this uh, discourse analysis as has uh, it has its uh, roots in ancient Greece and Rome because uh, the ancient Greeks and Romans uh, they had uh, at a time uh, in the peak of their civilization and they uh, perfected perhaps almost uh, every field of study so uh, they had one field of study um, that was called rhetorics and they made a distinction between grammar and rhetorics because the ancient Greeks and Romans they had also contributed to uh, the field of grammar if you study the origin of grammar so you will come to know that um, the basic things of grammar uh, were elaborated by them for example it was uh, um, and the, uh, the ancient uh, Greeks and Romans they introduced the parts of speech like they divided the words into different uh, parts for example verbs nouns adverbs etc etc so similarly they had this uh, field of three rhetorics uh, it is somehow similar to ilmul bayan if you have heard this word since they were interested in oratory in rhetorics in dialogues in symposiums scholarly discussions speeches etc etc so uh, they studied uh, a part of discourse analysis under the uh, cover rhetorics then um, uh, throughout the history people took interest in the uh, study of language and context for example uh, when uh, you were studying the history of English language so you came across one group they were the 18th century rhetoricians and they had also came up with uh, their own rules of usages and they devised uh, certain rules of usages for ascertaining and correcting the English language then um, uh, recently the major contribution uh, in discourse analysis was made by the anthropological linguist in the beginning of the 20th century because the prominent anthropologist uh, belong to this era uh, if you have heard the names of Benjamin Lee Wolf and Edward Sapper so they were basically anthropological linguists uh, they were interested in the Native American languages. They worked over these languages. So uh, they had also studied and uh, worked over this uh, uh, some of the areas of discourse analysis. Then it was uh, discovered that discourse analysis uh, overlaps with many other disciplines of humanities or social sciences for example in discourse uh, analysis we think uh, we study things that are studied by sociologists anthropologists and philosophers because um, um, the, these disciplines have 
uh, very much uh, things common uh, between the discourse analysis but uh, till that time discourse analysis was not treated as a separate discipline or a sub branch of linguistics as it was in the um, second half or the beginning of the second half of the 20th century that uh, the word discourse analysis appeared and later on it was established as uh, a sub branch of linguistics if you remember in the previous lecture we uh, uh, had discussed that there were two groups sentence linguists and those who were interested in discourse analysis but ironically uh, the word discourse analysis or the term DA was coined by the sentence, li sentence linguist. Uh, there was a linguist uh, by the name of Zelik Harris and he wrote an article in 1958 and it was entitled as discourse analysis. So um, perhaps this was the um, the first initiative met in order to establish DA as an independent field of study. Now two of his findings were very much interesting and it contributed a good deal in establishing DA as an independent field of study. Uh, his two findings were first he emphasized that the understanding of text requires study beyond sentence level okay uh, when uh, you uh, whenever you encounter this word text in this uh, whole course of discourse analysis so text does not mean the written language only or the language that is used in books or emails or um, other genres of writing rather in discourse analysis uh, text uh, employs any chunk of communication whether that is written or spoken and there are genres that uh, come in between written and spoken languages for example uh, in the in language of SMS or texting so it occupies space in between uh, written and spoken languages because it has the feature of both these mediums so text can uh, text is used in order to refer to spoken language for example a speech or advertisement and text is also used uh, as it is used conventionally in order to refer to a written language and the second finding um, um, came from the uh, article of Zelig Harris uh, he uh, emphasized the fact that uh, in order to analyze or understand or interpret a piece of language we no need to go beyond the premises of linguistics like we have to study some of the things that are studied in other disciplines as I had told you previously there are some uh, fields of study or disciplines that, 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 that are very much near and close to linguistics for example sociology so there is uh, uh, the interface of linguistics and sociology we have sociolinguistics there is the interface of anthropology and linguistics we have anthropological linguistics and same is the case with uh, philosophical linguistics so uh, this man Zelig Harris he stated that uh, we need to go beyond the premises of linguistics in order to interpret the text effectively and deeply so uh, after that uh, this is uh, was uh, regarded as a sub branch of linguistics and it emerged with the passage of time and uh, I had told you in the intro that discourse analysis is these days the uh, one of the popular branches of linguistics and uh, your module uh, deals with the basics of discourse analysis but many scholars and linguists came up their own theories 
uh, power and ideology and discourse analysis is studied in order to interpret the speech of politicians and uh, um, the investigation of discourse analysis is equally applied to uh, the text of literature and uh, other pieces of writing so um, let's uh, just to recap we started with the ancient Rome and Greece and we said that discourse analysis has its roots in ancient Greece and Rome then we said that um, throughout the history the study or the interplay of language and context interested the scholars then um, in the 18th century there was a group by the name of rhetoricians who took interest in the matters of linguistics then in the beginning of 20th century the anthropological linguists who were working with native american languages made their contribution and uh, it was in the second half of the 20th century that um, the term discourse analysis was coined by Zelig Harris and he emphasized that in order to understand the text or interpret the text effectively we need to go beyond the boundaries or the premises of linguistics um, uh, and uh, okay they um, um, they came up with their extended grammar extended grammar means that uh, they realized that we should uh, analyze the language beyond the sentence level so these were the two findings first he stated that we need to uh, take into account the language beyond the sentence level and secondly they studied um, he stated that we need to examine some of the other disciplines close to linguistics for example sociology anthropology philosophy etc etc uh, even psychology psychology also comes in um, these disciplines for example we have psycholinguistics uh, the study of language in relation to mind uh, then the later on uh, discourse analysis emerge as a popular branch or rather sub branch of linguistics so that's all for today uh, if you have any questions so uh, just uh, you may ask me uh, through voice messages and uh, through uh, your comments uh, uh, on the YouTube page thank you Allah peace.